Hey everyone, Andrew the Video Guy here for Drive Garvey. If you're wondering what the difference is between a hybrid vehicle and a plug-in hybrid vehicle, and, and how that plug-in hybrid is different from an electric car that you just plug in, you're not alone. It can be pretty confusing when you're new to the field of electrified vehicles. Vehicles that use electricity in some way or another to make them move. So today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over the difference between all of these, and we're gonna do it with the help of the ladder of electrification, or whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna take each step as it comes and see how internal combustion and electricity mix and match to get you where you're going. So first off is no electrification at all. These are gas powered or diesel powered vehicles driven by an internal combustion engine, uh, increasingly referred to just as ICE vehicles, I-C-E. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much about these. These are the baseline that we know cars to be. Uh, so I don't need to go into it too much, but I will say that they are the most efficient when they are running at a low constant RPM. They are much less efficient. They use more fuel when they are accelerating from a stop. And that is where the first step up the ladder, the hybrid vehicle comes into play. Three brand new Hyundai Tucsons. One of which is an internal combustion engine car and two of which are hybrids. Can you tell the difference? See, the thing is, it'd be a little hard to tell the difference in their day-to-day -day usage as well because they act exactly the same. Except instead of in an ICE vehicle where you have to use the engine to get up to speed and go through an inefficient part of its power band and all that, the battery and the electric motors are doing a lot of the work in getting you up to speed in the first place. That's what it is. It's that initial go from a stop sign, from a stop light, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a difference between a mild hybrid that's just gonna get you going and a full hybrid that has a slightly bigger battery. It's good for low speed around a parking lot. But the idea is the same in a hybrid electric vehicle or HEV. You just fill it up with gas and you go and you're totally fine. The electric stuff takes care of itself. You don't need to worry about plugging in or anything. Electric takes care of itself and takes care of you by saving you money on gas. Now, if you like that idea of running in electric only mode and really want to minimize your gas usage, then the next step up is the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or PHEV. Sometimes it's called a, a range extended electric vehicle or whatever, but plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is kind of the standard term now. The idea here is that you plug into the wall. This goes into a plug that you have in your car. This is the first step up the ladder that has its own dedicated electrical plug. And it charges a battery that's good for, on average, around 30 miles. That depends on the vehicle. Some are down around 20, some are up around 50, but 30 is kind of the industry standard right now. That's enough for your average commute, for zipping around town, running to the store, what have you. But then when you want to go on a longer trip, it's fine. You still have the gas engine to fall back on uh, and get you going there with that reserve. Uh, this com combines, I would say, the electric world and the gas world if you're not re ready to fully take that plunge. But there is still one more level after the PHEV on the electrification ladder. If you never want to step foot in a gas station again, the final step up the electrification ladder is the battery electric vehicle, or BEV, or is they're being called just EVs. Now, similar to the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, you are still plugging into the wall, either at home, at your destination, or at fast charger stations along the way. You're getting your energy out of the electrical grid. The difference is that unlike a plug-in hybrid, you do not have that gas engine to fall back on. It is all electric all the time with ranges somewhere in the 200 mile range. The Nissan Leaf is a little bit under that at 149 miles, but the all new Nissan Aria is gonna be over that at up to 300 miles of range. So obviously this varies based on what vehicle you're looking at. But the idea is the same. You are running on electricity off of the electrical grid. It is much more efficient. You are saving the environment and perhaps more importantly, saving yourself some money. Now, these things can be pretty intimidating. I get that, it can be scary. Charging infrastructure like this may not be really dense where you are. There's plenty of ways to find out, but if you're in a more rural area, it could be a decade or more. That's okay, you don't have to jump from ICE vehicle all the way up to battery electric. There are plenty of stages in between. That's what the ladder of electrification is for. Plenty of steps that you can take along the way. To explore more of those steps and to see the vehicles that we have in stock that could be just right for you on your journey up the ladder, just give us a call, stop into any of our dealerships, or visit drivegarvey.com today. 
Oh, and to, to answer the earlier question, you didn't think I was gonna leave you hanging, did you? The hybrids are the two on the outside. This one is the regular internal combustion engine vehicle. All of them are for sale. Just saying, stop on by.